Hey guys, just so you know, this is a trigger warning. Just that you know, today we do we are discussing the Black Lives Matter movement. We are discussing protests, looting, and rioting, and also murder. My name is Bob the Drag Queen, and I'm Money Exchange, and this is Sibling Rivalry. Today, we discuss boiling milk. We talk about the protest. And we find out what made Bob say this. You know, some people are born without assholes. And we find out what made Monet say this. Before, like in my 20s, I could eat as much ice cream and cheese as I wanted. Now, bitch, I'm at a limit. If I'm having Ben and Jerry's, I can have maybe about two, two spoons and then that's it. Monica, hello. How you doing, girl? I'm good, how are you, ugly? Ugly? Mm-hmm. What, are, what Why would you say that? I said what I said. Well, okay, y'all, just to the, to the listeners and the viewers, Monet is in a mood. <laughs> you mood love to think I'm in a mood. You love him. I'm really Girl, not, though. Call her Betsy because she's in a mood. Betsy? Betsy's account name. I don't even get Betsy's that. account name. I don't even get Betsy. Betsy's, everyone knows that Betsy's account name. Betsy is, listen, here we go with that country ass shit. I've never heard no damn Bessie. Bessie's the name of a... Everyone knows that Bessie's Bessie? the name Who's of a cow. Who's name is Bessie? It's just like a cow name. Ooh, it's like Spot. Who you, is like this everyone, knows, everyone knows that... Everyone knows that Spot is a dog name. Who is and this everyone cow? Knows that Betsy is who a cow is this name. cow? I don't think it's like a specific cow, but everyone knows that Bessie's a cow name. You're also looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> so, you've, so you've never met a cow named Bessie, but you just assume that... All I don't think I've ever met a cow. I haven't. Ever, I don't think I've ever even touched a cow in real life. Well, you're from the south. Wouldn't you have met a cow in your life? I mean, okay, I'm not. I'm from Columbus, Georgia. Oh my god. In, okay, in listen. Alabama. If you read, if you read our I'm comments, not, I'm not from farms. If you read our, if you read our comments, towns. everyone has got. We have had this conversation about where you're from. Eighty nine. Well, let's times. talk about you being from Brooklyn nineteen times and you living in Santa Lucia. <laughs> 19 times. That's different. New York is the center of the universe. New York is an interesting place. That's why you fucking oh, move so here. You, get, you so live you here. you get to say, so let me get this clear. You get to mention you're from New York unlimited, but I can only mention I'm from No, I don't talk about being from New York a lot, but New York that's, is... You are the Brita filter of New York City. <laughs> that doesn't make any... That is a joke. That's not even funny or a good You joke. say you are from New York. Why did you laugh then, bitch? I don't know. Well, laugh. Then why did you... <laughs> You went, uh, roll the footage back. Can I just say, Bob is a basic ass bitch, so Bob can't out to protest today. This motherfucker hopped off at about 80 something street. I'm not basic. <laughs> because Bob allegedly had gas. This motherfucker, y'all, he couldn't even walk down the block all crimped over. We had to all stop. I was not feeling well. <laughs> we had to all stop protesting to go sit with Bob old ass on a bench at the park. <laughs> What money? I was not feeling well. I could not. I couldn't. I was feeling ill. <laughs> well, okay. Whose fault is it that you had nineteen pizzas and eight di- diet cokes? I didn't say. Before? I did. I also didn't. T- I didn't say this is all y'all's fault. I didn't say y'all did this to me. All I said was I'm not feeling well. I have to go home. <laughs> but I was like, girl, I literally could not fucking do the thing. I had to fucking pull my lipstick. You and tell folks that my ass was going home because. Girl, I just w- I was not well. I was not well. <laughs> did you did you pass the gas? Did you shit? Yes, I ca- I came home and I did all the things that I had to do to make myself feel better. Is the answer to that very vulgar question? Whatever. Listen, <laughs> everyone who's listening to this podcast has had a bowel movement before. I I I, I can always guarantee that every single person listening to this podcast, not unless That's there is almost guarantee. You, you know, some people are born without assholes. That is not true. That is 100% true. How do you get rid of the waste? They put like a little hole in their, um, like it's like on the side of their abdomen. Okay, so it may not come from their ass, but they're still getting rid of shit. They've had a bowel movement. I don't know if you call that a bowel. I think a bowel movement has to go through the Oh my God, a Samantha Tick. That's why it's called a bowel. That's why it's called a bowel movement, because it has to go through the bowels. At this point, y'all know that Bob is the queen of semantics. Bob will find a way to weasel around your point if it is the last thing she does. 
All I'm saying is that your uh, comments are a little bit exclusionary about people who don't have bowel movements. Oh my god! Not unless there's like some newborn baby who has uh, who is we. This podcast is playing in someone's delivery room somewhere, and the baby has not had a bowel movement yet. Maybe them, or the person born without. <laughs> anyway, so Monet. So I called Monet today, and we agreed to start filming these. I don't know if y'all know we're we're now filming our podcast. Oh yes, yes. And the first fifteen minutes will be available on YouTube, and the balance of it is, or the full version is available on Patreon. But also, they're going to be integrated, because right now, Monet and I still have some in the bank that have not been recorded, so we're going to be, like, integrating between the... New, but after some time, they will all be filming. How much money do you have in the bank? I'm not saying how much money I have in the bank. Okay. Great. Were you talking how much money you have in the bank? No. I just asked you, because you said the bank, so I just was asking. Now, to anyone who knows Monet, you all know this is Monet in the mood. I think Monet, because <laughs> Monet walked a long time today. Oh, I called Monet, and Monet was like, we were doing the podcast. I expected to see Monet, like, sitting up. When I say Monet was okay, okay, in bed, see, covers this is, over her head, this is, sitting in a dark room like a vampire. This is what I'm talking about. With just, okay, finish. With just her eye like okay, this finish. in the... Okay, finish. I can't wait to... to just to her say. eye like this in the fucking picture. I was like, girl... Let me talk to y'all. Okay, like, let me know. Now, now let me tell y'all the actual story. So, I'm not done. I'm not, okay. I'm not done. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, wow. Monet is going to be on on God. one on this day. <laughs> and I was like... And Monet goes, oh, we're filming? And I was like, yeah, we said we're filming. We're filming them. Oh, that's... That's a thing. We filmed on Monday, and I was like, "Yeah, but we're like filming, Mom. What's good? This busy. Are you done? I'm done. This this is gonna be a wild ride on this day. (laughs) So." We first of all, Bob didn't even plan on us filming a podcast today. Him and so as I was coming uptown, I think Jacob called me or maybe Bob called me, and I was talking for a second, and I was like, "Hey, I should come over and we should do a podcast today so that we stay current." Bob over there, y'all, wanted to release a podcast that we recorded like a few months ago about God knows what, and I was like, "No, let's stay current." I did not. What is what, that? Is not yes. Ask Jacob. You okay, just this is, made no, that up. No, talk to talk to Jacob who was right there with you. Talk to Jacob. Jacob's right here. Did, did did I say we should release the podcast? from a month ago Jacob speak up I feel like maybe we had a communication issue I didn't realize we were recording a new podcast so I suggested we use either the one about food habits stay tuned for that one or the one where we talk about about black media because that also so you called Monet a liar alright go ahead no he did not call me a liar Jacob on the phone Jacob was like no we're putting out the episode from when we discussed black media did Jacob say and you were on the phone for that you were on the phone for that so why are you acting brand new no, I was in the. You said you said do you want to do the do you want to do a new one to say current or use the one from Black Media? And I said we could do either one, girl. And then I said, I didn't and say, then I, I said, and then to use I said, the okay, like, this, I'm telling my side of the story. Then I said I'm gonna come over around seven. Boom, I get a text from Jacob. Jacob's like Bob is sleeping. I was like, work. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I slept. So I was like, so okay, so we're just not. This was by you. So you six, caught me. I sleep th- every day. I this sleep. is at six fifty. Bob, the time we're supposed to rock podcast. Bob is sleeping. Work. So it I, was not six fifty. It was that is absolutely. Not true. I had the text. Check the time stamp of that text. Check the check the time stamp of that text. I was not asleep at six fifty. Oh my that god! Just, what time was I it? This was at, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, was, sorry, sorry. Six forty. It was what time? Sorry, six thirty nine. Oops, ten minutes, eleven minutes earlier. Whoops. Which was the time yeah, to leave my 11 house? Eleven minutes is a lot. Hold your breath for eleven minutes. See if eleven <laughs> so, minutes is a lot. Um. So anyway, <laughs> so then I was like, okay, so I guess I'm going to go over. And then Jacob says, time. and then Jacob sent me a text. He said, maybe a call. Let me show the readers. Maybe a call at nine slash ten. I said work. So. At nine o'clock pass, and I thought in my mind Bob is still sleeping because Bob has not let me know he's not sleeping. So then, in at, your mind. so then at ten o three, I get a message. I'm like, oh, like I didn't know what we're doing. I'm here again. I'm here doing. I, I fucking love the podcast, but you call me at ten o three. I do not know when you're gonna fucking wake up. I'm not a fucking uh, a fucking Sarah fairy godmother. I can wake you up. But at what point in there did, did you have this proof that I wanted to do a podcast, post a podcast from a month ago? Jacob said that yeah, we were putting up the one from a month ago. Jacob said I said that. No, I, I never said he said you said, but y'all are over there. Y'all are over there. Y'all are over there in the cahoots. The truth comes out in the wash There's every no, I time, never said, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all are over there in cahoots. I don't know what y'all planning. That's y'all business. So you just you jump so, so you're you, 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 you No, you jump to conclusions, bitch. 
You are so childish and petty. I cannot even do it. Right anyway, now. but here we are recording. Anyway, a so new episode of the podcast. <laughs> I was watching, and it's really an, I'm so annoyed with you because I was sitting at home, like feeling ill. So I started watching. Um, I watched the pit stop today. Um, and then I started, then like just started suggesting all this and I just, I just kept watching all of our old YouTube studio videos. And I was like, I just really miss doing this. And I was like, I miss Monet. And then I called you and you were fucking rip roaring and ready to go, girl. <laughs> oh my God, you're so, yeah, by the way, at, at this point, y'all have been, all the dedicated listeners, y'all know that Bob is the most hyperbolic human that has ever been a hyperbolic human. He's okay. First of all, bitch, I taught you the word hyper- hyperbole. Let's get let's get that. Yeah, Bob, Let's you taught me the word hy- hyperbole and simile and all those things yeah. you learn in fucking. English. I don't know what. Anyway, so y'all know that Bob is yeah, always exactly. over exaggerating everything. So. I'll let oh, y'all y'all, see. That's funny because they all know that you be <laughs> no, you no. Moni makes up these false these <laughs> whole things where, she, about? where she's like where money goes everyone knows and then everyone will come in and be like we all didn't that know is that just not like you just said true. Jacob said that and Jacob was like uh, I didn't say Jacob that Jacob literally like, did not say he didn't he say that it. he did not say he said he didn't say that well, I'll ask the question plain and clear Jacob did you tell Monet that I wanted to post an old video no well, that is a clear, okay, but I never emphatic said that. no. I said so did that, he not? I said that we were. I said that y'all decided. I said y'all decided. I don't know if it's you or Jacob or yourself or together, but y'all decided we were That's doing. That's not what you said. What you said was Bob wanted to post an old one from a month ago, and then you said Jacob told you that. And Jacob told you he didn't say that, and then you switched your story. You know what? Let me. That just, is the actual fact. Let me just show I mean, the. the, the I'll, I'll let the fans read it for themselves. Y'all are reading. Y'all are reading the receipts. Y'all have seen them on camera. Boom, right there. Well, Jacob what is it? Read it, Jacob. R- read it, Jacob. Anyway. All I'm saying is I'm acknowledging that you said I said it. Then you said Jacob told you. You know what? We'll let the receipts. didn't tell you. We'll let the receipts. And then you said, oh, I just assumed because we you're in We will cahoots. let the receipts speak for themselves. I, I, I have, I have, I'm done with this. I know what I said and what I heard, and I just proved But, no, we have you recorded. And we, I, have this is a podcast I have text receipts. I have text receipts. That we are recording. I have text receipts. You are... But does your text? My last question is: Does your text say Bob? This is my last question: Does your text say Bob wants to post an old podcast? That's not what we're talking about. That's not the mission at hand. What what, what is the mission? The mi- also, I need to tell you why my mom's mad at you. By the way, oh yeah, your mom's mad at me. Tell me why I miss Martha. Why do I? I I have I have nothing but a great son to miss Martha. What's the to you? Well, I got a fucking earful today. Okay, I. <laughs> Um, I my mom. I get a text. Call me. You ever get these texts? My, no, my mom would just call me like five times. She won't text. My my my, my mom is not. Miss Martha is way more tech savvy. Than, my mom is not tech savvy at all. My mom's not super tech savvy. I mean, she went to school for information technology, but in two thousand four, and everything's changed since then. <laughs> um, but my mom, um, I got a, the I got the call me text, and I was like, oh god, here it goes. Here here we go. So my mom says, call me. I call her, and she's like, I know you was at that protest today. <laughs> First of all, she called her, How she did called she it know? A, she called it a riot. I know you was at that riot today. I said, I was not at a riot. <laughs> I was at a protest. I was at a march. Um, and then she goes, I heard your voice in Monet's video. I heard it. I heard your voice in the background. I didn't do any videos when you were there, though. Well, I, maybe her super mom power. She was like, I know you was there. And I know Jacob was up there too. I said, "Yeah, mom, we were there." And she was like, "And I saw Monet without a mask on." <laughs> Tell Monet, I said, "Put that goddamn mask on." She didn't say goddamn, <laughs> but put the, it was some ex, some ex, expletive, ex, expletive. Um, like, tell Monet to put that mask on her face. <laughs> so she was mad that you weren't wearing a mask at the at the the protest. Well, what it was today was or the riot, as my mom calls it. Today it was super hot, and we just to give you a context. Uh, I biked from my home down about about 40 blocks down to where the parade... Oh, my God. The parade. Jesus Christ. When they, when they sent the t- <laughs> the text, talking about receipts, and the text is like, hey, I'm, I'm really close to the parade. And then she sent the word uh, protest with an asterisk like it was a typo, like it like it was autocorrect. I never said... Okay. Okay, guys. No, you didn't say it, but when people do the asterisk, it usually no, goes, oh, I'll just, I typed the wrong thing. Exactly. That's what I, that's what I want to say to the... To the when you guys type, uh, like when you say... When you make a mistake in text and you send oh, the correct word with the asterisk, that means that's, that that's what I meant to say or I typed it wrong. It doesn't mean that it was a, a spell check. 
I feel like Mm-mm. there is a thing in the air where when there's an asterisk, it insinuates that like either your phone autocorrected it poorly, but not like you made a mistake. Not like, hey, not like if I say, "Hey, uh, Jacob, don't forget to bring your wig," and then I just put Monet with an asterisk next to it. I was that 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 seemed maybe maybe it's just the different way that we yeah, use asterisks. Yeah, yeah, and it's not I, called a little star; it's called an asterisk. I never said a little star. <laughs> Just oh my god you, okay so y'all decide well, who's the one who's the one who's in a move Bob is getting real Lord you don't have to call me Lord one day <laughs> I haven't written any any great music like that speaking of riots um, I know you've seen it that young lady the, um, Kimberly Jones from I think she's from Minneapolis we need to talk about Kimberly Latrice Jones mm-hmm. let's talk about it after the break let's talk about okay, after the break because this, this is good this is I, <laughs> Woo! And we is back. Oh my god, that was such um, a poor let's... pop. Ah, it's so bad today. There we go. Um, Kimberly girl, Jones. Kimberly Latrice, I'm obsessed. Wait, is, Latrice, is her middle, middle name Latrice? Name, respect. I think it's Latrice. Can we get someone on that, please? Um, <laughs> I like it. Said someone like it is not Jacob. <laughs> Well, I'd be saying stuff, and I'd be hoping Jacob started t- typing it, but then I'd be like, Jacob, can you? By the way, Jacob's doing a really lovely, angry Jacob's doing a really lovely job. Um, she really, she like, this you. video is, I, I, okay, so I start, so when Jacob came home, um, I was like, on the phone, and then we were, like, watching videos, and I just ran, I was like, this randomly, was today? Myself, oh, yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to watch this video, mm-hmm. let me click it, and I thought I was about to just, like, watch a little Video. I almost started crying. Oh. My fucking noodles. Oh, I've watched that video. I'm not kidding. About four times now. Like I've just watched it like four times because she just does the perfect job of explaining systemic racism and the and 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 explaining the differences between between um riots, looters, I mean, uh, protesters, rioters, and looters. And it is just so eloquently done. And then my favorite part is when she like, because the system is broken. Because y'all broke, um no, y'all broke the contract. You broke the contract. Oh, yeah. that shit. Oh, she is. Can we get her? We should have her as a guest on the podcast just for a little hot take with her. Kimberly Latrice. And her name is Latrice. Kimberly Latrice Jones. She went in. By the way, can I say also, I'm really annoyed that I left my, I made a, a sign for the protest. And oh I left my it God. I, I'm happy with that home. That sign is inappropriate and you should not have that sign. I don't think it's inappropriate. I think it's inappropriate. Well, the sign said, this sign is my proof that I'm not a, I'm not a looter. And on, on the back it says, but if you are a looter, grab me some Louboutins. I think that is I inappropriate think- and I'm happy you left it at home. I don't think, listen, I don't think it is inappropriate. I think that we are allowed to uh, process this in whichever way we feel okay. necessary. So I don't think it's inappropriate at all. If you guys like think when that, when that comedian, <laughs> it's like It's like when, when Chris Rock made a joke about, um, he was like, uh, when Chris Rock goes and says, some jobs can't have uh, bad apples. Uh, so-and-so airlines can't say most of our planes like to land. And he is making a joke regarding the situation. And I don't think that's inappropriate. I think he's using his art. To send a message. Well, he was making a simile between planes and cops shooting people. That's a, I, I think that's a little different as opposed to making fun of the. Well, they're different things, but he what he did was he made a joke. Oh, I about I, this I get it. I just think that the looting thing is a little different because it's something that is has been such a heavy uh, 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 topic, and it's something that that I think that we and have, the cops shooting people hasn't been a heavy on, and it's something that we have especially differentiating between the looters and the rioters and the protesters has been something that has been like super uh, what's the word I'm looking for topical I was I was about to say this whole protest season it's, that is so crazy that we that this is like not it's crazy it's really good that it's an everyday part of our lives right now but it just feels that it's it's a good thing. It's all good things that we're doing this. It just the fact that this is our reality still uh, 450 years later. It is so crazy. Yeah. Every time I I'm just confused it. that you think that Chris Rock making a joke about cops shooting people 
is well, a, he wasn't is making a joke about cops shooting people. He was basically saying it is what he made was a joke. It was a that you can't. But it wasn't about cops shooting. It was not about it cops. Was it was not about. It was a joke. It was not about cops shooting people. He what he's saying is because in because when Chris Rock made that what joke, what do you think it's about? When you when when Chris Rock made that joke, you like oh it it, it it makes you like think back like that makes so much sense. Like of course we can't say there's just a few black pilots because it will kill many people. That's different as opposed to wait. What do you think his joke was about? But I'm saying what you're making light of and. And saying but I'm not a loser. Monet, Chris, what do you think Chris Rock was making a joke about? I'm genuinely curious. You don't think it was about cops shooting people? What do you think it was okay, about? Okay, it was about cops shooting people. However, the, when he when he's making the joke, it is a joke that forces you to reflect on the situation and be like, oh, this makes so much sense. When, so, so when people made that comparison, you're like, okay, I get it. The, having those uh, having those ignorances around 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 cops shooting people and and, and, and making it as like pilots crashing planes and killing people like you it, that is a light bulb moment whereas making fun of people looting stuff when saying that you're not a looter when people are looting getting shot and protesting when they, for looting I'm so confused you think that jokes about cops shooting people is fine but a joke about looting is offensive but Chris I'm, Rock I'm so is using his humor right Chris, now Chris Rock I can't is even using, figure out where you are Chris Rock is using his humor as a simile to be like hey this is why this thing is bad whereas you're saying looting and what do you think I'm doing well you saying but yeah, saying that this this is proof that I'm not a looter, that's fine. But saying, but if you are taking a pair of Louboutins, I for me for my taste, and again, that's just me, bitch. You can you but, can but, but you, you can do take, understand that you can the, take you, you can take the comparison signs, you're making, but you can take thirteen. But signs the question is, do you understand the comparison you're saying doesn't make sense? What you it can't does, just it makes, say is, it I don't prefer sense. this joke. But you can't say this joke is fine. This joke is offensive. You can't just I say can't this joke is offensive. I can decide which joke is offensive, which joke offends you, and which joke doesn't. That's just that is. I you absolutely can, you can't can do that. You can certainly decide which joke offends you, but your comparison is not working. You're saying that jokes about cops shooting people is fierce and funny. I did not say it's but a joke about Louis I is said like that I am bad. not offended by Chris Rock's joke. I, that does not say that I think it's fierce. And it does, I, didn't, I, I never said it's funny. I mean, um, I'm not saying it's fierce. It's like, woo, pop off. I'm just saying I'm not offended by that joke. That's all I'm saying. You, Chris Rock can make as many jokes about whatever he wants to. I'm not offended by his joke that was a simile that, that was likening a few bad pilots to a few bad cops and saying that a few bad pilots will kill a lot of people. Where because again that that causes reflection and 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 introspection and really makes you look at the situation like oh that makes and so much mine, sense. And just because mine doesn't give you introspection doesn't mean that okay. It doesn't and call I that said for people. me, you can do you can take. 19, and I'm telling you about me. You can take nineteen uh, 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 cardboard boxes down to the thing with your jokes on it, and that's good. I'm just saying for me, that's a, you, you. We're talking about it, and I said for me, that's literally all I said. I don't know why you did it. Money. So that's literally the same thing I'm doing. I'm I'm literally. It's really weird whenever someone goes, I'm just saying to someone who's also just saying. Well, you literally you just say. When someone, and, and someone goes, wait, wait, wait. When someone goes, I'm just saying. You're like, bitch, what the fuck you think I'm doing? Not also just but saying. You, okay, We're but all you just said saying. the same thing. You were like, so, or, or, or when people say, so you think, I never said I think Chris Rock's jokes are fierce and funny. You're, you're saying that. You're making that assumption. because You do think that Chris Rock's joke is not offensive and mine is. That you That is true. Yes, I'm not offended by Chris Rock's joke. I thought yours was offensive. Yes. I and I was I telling you why that why that does not work in well, for you. actual um and no, I'm telling you why your comparison between the two doesn't scan. That's not how that works, Bob. You can't tell me what I'm offended. You you don't you don't, as just Judy I didn't says. T- I'm not telling you. I'm not well, telling you that's on, not offensive. Hold on, hold on. I'm telling as you why Judy the comparison says, doesn't scan. But at, but as just Judy said, you cannot. You can that it, that requires a skill that no one in the world has. You cannot tell me. For me, why You're something doesn't hearing make sense. me wrong. I'm not telling you why. It, I'm telling you why it doesn't scan. If you say I don't like bananas because microphones are shaped like so and so, that doesn't scan. No but one. But that is not what we're go, talking I, about. What I'm telling you is that they're, they're, you're trying to make a, uh, what do you call it when you compare two things? Uh, a, um, not, not a simile, not a metaphor. What they do in SATs. So-and-so is to so-and-so as so-and-so is to so-and-so. There, there's literally a, like a whole thing on the SAT where you have to make sure that your comparisons actually scan. And I'm saying this comparison doesn't scan. I don't agree with that. I don't so think that's true. And it's not based on, but it's also not based on opinion. But it's, it's not, but it's not true. It's not true. It's the same thing. We are, we are comparing two jokes about... Te- uh, in theory, the same thing. 
and, and analogy. Uh, yeah, right. We are we, we we're, we're comparing two jokes to essentially the same topic. And I am telling you that I am not offended by Chris Rock's joke, but I think yours is. No one's arguing that. No one's arguing that. All I'm saying is your analogy in terms of analogies doesn't work. And analogies have a thing. It's not just like my opinion on an analogy. Analogies have to work or they don't work. Well, the basis of this argument is that I am not offended by Chris Rock's joke, and I think yours is. That is the basis of this of this of this of this conversation and I think now and argue we're having two different discussions mark. you're discussing whether or not I think that your opinion on something of being offensive is, is right that's not what I that's not what I'm discussing what I'm discussing is your analogy doesn't work but that is the root of this conversation I'm going back to the root I am going back to the roots of why we started talking about this which was was it offensive or not do you agree was that not the topic of at, at the beginning of this is that am I offended yeah it was by... the beginning but also the conversation has shifted right okay but yeah, don't you agree conversations do that but I'm, yeah it's just Conversation shift, but the basis of what we're talking we about go. is the offensiveness of Chris Rock's joke and yours. And I don't think Chris Rock's was offensive. I think it was well. Good. There's probably somebody offended by Chris Rock's joke. There's probably people offended by a lot of the fucking shit you said. I'm sure and shit that I've said over over the years, over time. One hundred percent. And I'm telling you why. And I'm telling you why. In my opinion, this joke that I told is because there's no there's. For me, it's like it's not about murdering. It's not about this. It's not about but that. But it is because people are murdering it's, looters or they are shooting looters. And Chris Rock's joke is also about murder. Okay, but okay, so you're saying okay, it's offensive okay, because okay. of the murder. But you but just Chris said it's because of the murder. But you just said that people aren't getting murdered for looting. I'm like, well, they are. People are getting shot for that. That is a fact. So, but I'm saying again, <laughs> I think that I, I I don't think you can change my mind about what I think about that. I mean, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm giving a, a, a different perspective to people who are listening to it. Okay, work. So it's not a, it's not about it's not about changing your mind. It's a different perspective for someone else who might be listening. For example, when you see uh, when you see someone holding up a sign that says "Karens for Justice," I would like to speak to the manager of systemic uh, racism. In my opinion, that's not an offensive joke. Is there is the idea of systemic racism involving in this whole thing have a lot to do with murder as well? The the short answer is yes, obviously it does. But I don't personally think that it's offensive for someone to hold that sign and make that joke. Right, but uh, but but you oh, but someone probably is offended by it. So that's just how well someone's offended by almost everything. Well, that's just how comedy and that's just how life works. That is just obviously. How, that's just how, well, I'm just saying what that, that is what we're talking about here, Roberta Elaine, the drag queen. I know, and, I, and I'm just offering you a different perspective on this thing in general. Anyway, I mean, this I, has I'm, gone on way too that, long. I mean, I think that it. I mean, this is how discussions work. I mean, <laughs> you end up shifting. What's so funny? Why is that funny? Nothing. I didn't listen. But why is, I don't get, I, I genuinely don't get why that's funny. I'm genuinely curious. <laughs> there's, there's literally no reason. I'm just laughing, girl. So is it is it funny or is it not? I'm I'm so confused. I'm laughing. Okay, now you're doing a thing. I'm just laughing at this whole. I, I'm not doing I, a thing. I'm like, why? Is, I'm just like, you ever someone laugh? You're like, I'm just so laughing funny? at Bob. Anytime that you and I talk for a long time, I you know I do you, you know I do this. I'll just start laughing. You be like, Monet, what's so funny? I'm just I'm just laughing at you, and I'm like, and I'm and, and I'm and I'm always asking like, what's so? I, well, this th- my behavior also isn't new. <laughs> well, I'm, eight like, years later, I'm, asking, I'm like, what the fuck is so funny? Eight years later, it is the same thing. Nothing, and I, my response is always the same. Nothing. I'm just laughing. That's literally all I always say that you laugh at stuff when there's nothing to laugh at yeah i just i'm just laughing at you. Stuff is like, i just think that you i mean just, you just some, people, me some people a lot of people also laugh because they're nervous or because they're uncomfortable i mean i personally don't engage in that behavior i don't laugh at all uh, I, I just like to laugh at you. i didn't say you were doing that just not saying people do that people just go <laughs> that's a, that's a sasha Woo. horns of you she's like <laughs> I don't know why she's laughing. I don't know if she's because she's uncomfortable. It's kind of like Ivy Winters. Ivy Winters laughs after almost every sentence she speaks out loud. She laughs at what? After all, at the end of almost every sentence that Ivy Winters speaks out loud, they almost all end with a laugh. Huh. I've never really encountered I I don't think I've ever met Ivy in real life. I don't yeah, I don't, I've never met her in like flesh. I've only seen her on TV or Instagram. I've never met her in real life. Well, I knew her from the scene before she was a RuPaul's Drag Race girl and she I taught her she taught me how, I taught her how to juggle. No, I taught her how to crack a whip. That's what I taught her how to do. She's a really good juggler. I taught her how to crack a whip. She taught me how to um ventilate wigs. Was she a clown? And we used to just kind of like she was a clown, yeah. Whoa. We bonded over our love for clowns. All right, you do love clowns. 
I remember your little your little clown photo series. Which one? I've done so many. I've done so many. But well, the one is you as a boy. Um, well, my clown didn't have a gender. Offensive. Um, oh, the one of me in what would you consider male presenting drag? Were you, were you in drag? Look, I mean, what is drag is the question. Then the answer is yes. Ask RuPaul. I mean, what do you consider drag? That's a genuine question. What do you consider? I know what I consider drag. What do you consider drag? Um, I consider drag. Wait, why is Jacob looking? Why, why are you looking like that? Oh, we just haven't talked about any current events. We've been recording for half an hour. No, we talked about the protest today. Uh, oh yeah, well, 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 yeah. Let, let, let's let's finish more about the, a little more about the protest stuff today. Um, yeah. So the the protest went on from one hundred. We have talked about. We have to say we haven't talked about any is not a fair. That's not a fair statement. <laughs> y'all see, y'all see, y- y- yo, y'all see, Bob is. All- <laughs> Well, that's not a fair statement. We literally talked about the protest for 25 minutes. Bob is on one today, y'all. Um, so I'm not. You said we haven't talked about any. And I was like, that's just not true. He trying to fight her. That's just not yeah, a true. He's trying to fight everybody. Yeah. Um, so the protest. <laughs> the pro- that's, I'm just saying that's not true. The protest. That is a mischaracterization of what's happened today on this podcast. <laughs> the protests went from 110th Street down to uh, Washington Square Park, which is about four, uh, 7th Street, something like that. So over 103 blocks. I mean, you walk down. I'll have to say one of the um, one of the really one of the great parts of the protest for me was when we stopped when because going down Central Park West in New York City, you stop, you pass right in front of a really big Trump Tower, and I mean to see like oh wait, which one? The one right at Columbus Circle. Work. And, and you know, to see, like, the black people working there and the Latinx people working there and they're just standing there in front of the building, like, all, like, the officers, all the people who worked there, they were, like, outside the front building, like, recording us. And, like, everyone is, like, booing and, like, and, like, all these, like, chants. Wait, booing, the, booing the, the workers of the tower? Well, Drew, just booing Trump Tower. And then, and then someone started to chant, like, um, uh... Hey, hey, ho, ho, Donald Trump has got to go and all that stuff and just booing the tower and stuff. And they just sitting there like with their phones recording and smiling and like laughing. I'm like, that shit just really irks me. I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, you think that, wait, you the people, let me just get this clear because I didn't make it this far. I couldn't make it this far. <laughs> the people, who the black and Latinx people who were working at Trump Tower were filming the protests and, and laughing and smiling. Yeah. Well, again, to be fair, it wasn't only black and Latinx people there, but there were a few black folk and a few Latin folk, among with whatever else, whoever else was present there. But they're like, I mean, why do you think they were? I mean, why do you think they were laughing as well? I don't know. I feel like, because you know, I feel like these are people. They probably just trying to make an honest living for their families. Like, I don't. I'm not in people's pockets. I'm not in people's bank accounts. I don't know what people's needs are. Like, what they need to do, but. Maybe a part of them that was like, I am trying to make an honest living for me and my family, and I know it sucks that I work at a Trump uh, building, but girl, this is my source of income, and I think that to them, a way that they're coping of it, um, a, a way that they're coping with it, is to look at the protesters and kind of like record them. And I, I mean, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't have the answers. I mean, again, to go back to what we were saying earlier, I mean, a lot of people laughing and smiling isn't always a response to thinking something's actually funny. Right. Sometimes you're laughing or smiling because you are genuinely uncomfortable and yeah. you don't know what else to do. I'm. I don't. I. I would certainly not like to get in the business of um, shaming people who work at these towers to provide for their families. Right. That doesn't speak to me. Yeah. Personally. Um, and they probably are terribly conflicted. I mean, imagine thinking to yourself, "I have a job and benefits, and I need to, and I need to feed my children," mm-hmm. and or quitting out of symbol, quitting symbolically when a lot of Americans and New Yorkers specifically have not been working for three months. Yeah, right. Some people have been living off of twelve hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you're a single mom. Who works at Trump Tower? You made twelve hundred. And you have like two two plus kids at home. You know what I mean. And you're trying to make twelve hundred dollars stretch over three months now. Three months. So I'm not in the business of trying to tell that woman shame on you for anything. That just doesn't feel right. To right. Me. It doesn't it, that doesn't feel nice. Well, and anything that's. I'm also not in the business of that person filming everyone. I mean, if they're laughing or whatever, maybe they're maybe they were laughing because they agreed, or maybe they're laughing because they were like. Yeah, get this motherfucker. Maybe they were laughing because they were, you know, who knows why they were laughing. Right. 
I mean, and then that is, and then when you, and then when you are pro- um, protesting and marching, and you're passing all of these cops on the street, and again, we're in New York City. I mean, I can't speak. I mean, I'm sure New York uh, uh, police departments all over the country, all over the world, honestly, probably look very different, and they probably dip people of many different colors and backgrounds. But when you're walking and you're protesting, and you see like in New York City, so many black cops and so many Latin cops and stuff like that, like it's like and people get and like you see some protesters like yelling at them and like saying some really disparaging stuff and it's like yeah some of these cops they're like this is well my there gr-. was a moment where you said something disparaging and this lady turned around and was like oh my goodness when we, we were talking about what were we talking about you and I were you and, you and I were walking in the march uh-huh. and then you were you it was kind of jokingly it was it was literally just to me and you said something like fuck that fucking pig and then the lady turned oh, around no. and said, "Oh my goodness!" Oh no, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were talking, we were talking about if, um, if if you if you saw your brother, if my brother, yeah, yeah. But she thought you were like yelling at the cops on the street, and she was like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, don't bring him next time." <laughs> yeah, and then so yeah, but so many cops around the around the around the world and around the country, especially especially in the states right now because it's so heated. They're probably like, "This is like the money I have to feed my family." So it's like, and people are like, "Fucking resign and leave your job," and it's just like that's like a hard decision to make, you know. I mean, they also could have been saying they were laughing because they know something we don't know. I mean, I actually don't even think that Donald Trump owns those towers anymore, but the fact that his name is on them. Mm-hmm. And actually, if you go to the um, West Side Highway, his name's been removed. From yeah, all from all of those. Have, but the ones in Manhattan... They, fucking, they were like, no, no, no. The ones on Fifth, the one on, the one on Fifth Avenue and the one on Columbus Circle, they're like... I feel like he has some type, something there because they're heavily guarded. I I, I honestly don't. They know. have like I, all year the round. One, they have barricades and police officers, like many police well, officers. Well, he lives in there. the one on Fifth Avenue, right? Of, uh, That's the gold Melania one. Melania like lives in the, in the one. It's the it's like the it's the, it's like his first skyscraper they ever built, right. I think. Um, and uh, the one on Fifth Avenue, I think I think Melania still lives in there. Really. Cause you know, that, honestly, it's so convoluted. I've heard that she doesn't live in the White House anymore, and then also uh, Ivanka Trump is uh, is picking up duties of the First Lady. It's really? such a fucking mess. Yeah, like the like a lot of those, this, a lot of that stuff that the First Lady would normally do, like advocating, and going around the world, and like talking. Ivanka Trump does all of that. Melania doesn't do any of that. That is so nutty. I think it's also. Yeah, it is weird. I mean, it's it's probably the first time since JFK that a first lady has had a child as young as Baron. Oh right, they're normally much. Old. I mean, no, because Sasha Malia Malia was. That's true. Yeah, Sasha Malia were young girls. Yeah, they were young. Honestly, they were young. it's all so fucking convoluted. I don't even like what what what. I can't remember who who. I think it was on, um, All Stars episode one where Cracker said Trump is president. Oh right, chaos reigns. Ugh. And when she said that, I was like, oh, God. But it's true. It's so, I know, I'm saying, but it was like, I was just hearing it on Drag Race and like just hearing her say that, I was like, God, that is. Ugh. Yeah, yeah girl, Trump triggering. is president. Chaos fucking reigns. Like, mama, this is insane. And, and there was a moment, too, where I was thinking to myself, you said it, you were like, this is going to be in history books. We're going to, this, this March is going to be in history books. And. Yeah. Whenever you're in the middle of something that feels like that, you don't notice it. Like when people were at the Rodney King riots, mm-hmm. they didn't think to themselves, "People are going to be reading about this." Right. But by the time I got to college, we were re- we were then reading about the Rodney King riots, and pictures from the Rodney King riots were surfacing in my college textbook. I mean, I was in elementary school; I was five when the, when the riots happened. That means I was. Where were you born? I was ninety, so I was there. I was two. You were two years old. Two years old when yeah. it started. Um, which, which is, which is, which is. Speaking of that, something that I've really been looking, like researching on, like reading stuff online, like, like advocating policy to make like African American history like a mandated part of the curriculum. I think is a great place to start because there's so many things from Black history. And indigenous history and like other like I feel like that need to be taught into like not just like an elective that you can choose to do it if you feel like it your junior or your senior year like actual like full year length courses about Black history and LGBTQ. What history. do you all study? What do you all study over in New York City? I mean, in in, in Georgia we do a lot of Black history, like a really, lot of, especially. Oh my! Oh my God! Yes, I'm. I'm, Not in mind, I'm from Atlanta, right? And which is the home of MLK. Right. So like we just really do a. When I was in school, 
we did a lot of black history, like a lot of oh. it. And also, you have to take, you have to take Georgia history in Georgia. Yeah, you, you told me that. That Georgia is so bizarre. History. I never took any New York history or anything like that. That's so crazy. And yeah, in New York, you don't do anything like that. So in like middle school, you do social studies, but you learn like the regular stuff about the French Revolutionary War and the Civil War and stuff like that. Yada yada yada. But even that kind of information that you get from school is so distorted. It's so whitewashed, and um, so it's all bullshit. I'm sure mine was pretty whitewashed too. I mean, we did a whole year of Georgia history. In like eighth grade. Yeah. We just learned about Georgia. And then in high school, because I went to a performing arts school, we did humanities. And humanities was this like blend of like social studies and English together. It was like a weird class and we'd do it. It was longer than the other subjects. Like we would do humanities instead of like the 45 minutes, it was like an hour and a half. So, um, or like an hour, something like that, or 15 minutes, whatever. Um, but yeah, but we don't, but we never, I mean, again, like I'm sure every classroom you do like a, there's a section on black history or African American history and you learn about the slave trade and stuff like that. But I'm talking about like an in-depth part of the curriculum, like a full year. So you learn about Tulsa, you learn a lot, uh, about Rosewood, you learn about like when the slave trade started and all of the intricacies with that. Uh, because also another thing I'm seeing is that, have you seen this too? Like fans of yours from like Denmark and like Finland and like other places, they're like, oh my God, America is so crazy. We don't have racism here. Like black people are not mad here. So this is so crazy to watch. And I'm like, <laughs> talk to the black well, people. Well, they think they don't, well, they think, yeah, they think they don't have racism. I'm like, yeah, talk, talk to, to the people I in go your to place. Anywhere, yeah, whenever I go across uh, across the pond and I speak to black people from like Stockholm, be like, "Girl, they racist as hell." Exactly. Man. So I'm like, I don't. I'm, I, I'm always like, um, "Mama, that is not true." Australia, Australians are like, "Well, the niggas here really love it, mate." <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm like, I want. I actually want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about something. I, I want to discuss something. It's a, it's a callback to a disc, the, the conference we had earlier, but I want to know what you think about this. Well. In terms of us being able to return to our art forms and what we do, uh-huh. for me, it's either drag or making jokes or this, that, and the other. And, like, Shea kool posted this long thing about, like, she felt guilty about being able to continue her art and share her art online in the midst of all this. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, um, I see, I agree with her, but she's like, but I'm going to share it because it seems important to share this stuff, especially... During this time, I'm intrigued by the idea that the system of racism has made it to the point where we as black people, it's boiled up so high, the pot has boiled over, and it's all coming to the surface now. Um, And so, and we are the ones who have to bring it to the light and remind white people that this is not just ours to fix, but you have to fix it too because you have the biggest hand in this. Mm -hmm. And then we're made to feel guilty because we're then, and then on top of that, we're made to feel guilty for participating in our normal lives because um, it's happening during this time. Right. Wait. So, so I don't think that humor. I don't think that humorists. I don't think that drag queens, black any black people who work in any of these fields, you should not feel embarrassed or ashamed to continue your art and post about your stuff during this time. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that at this time it's it's more so important to share your art, whatever whatever that is. Um, If you like, for example, you are a drag queen, you are a comedian. So your art that you posted today was you and your obviously you're promoting a pit stop, whatever. That's beside the point. But your art comes through pictures and through fashion and through posting them on Instagram for people to pictures and what pictures what you said pictures and. What was the other thing you said? I don't remember what I said. Honestly, don't. I'm not sure. It was fashion. Oh, fashion. Yeah, fashion. Well, it was fashion. that was stopped by someone else, so that's a different story. Um, but, it was fashion. <laughs> um, but that is your avenue for your art. And you posted this very, really strong, beautiful um, black power image and that's like your avenue for creativity and for your and 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 using your platform in that way so if you're a chef bitch fucking bake if you if you're a writer write some fierce poetry write some story like cover stories do some editor some op-ed like whatever like i think whatever your avenue of art or creativity or not if you're a doctor bitch go doct you know what I mean? Like, do your thing <laughs> is that what you think doctors do they dock <laughs> um have you ever heard of docking yeah I, I mean sorry I- yeah, I've heard of docking, and I don't think now is an appropriate time to talk about it. I know. Since we're talking about what's appropriate, what's offensive. I, know, I just thought about um, it really quick. I was like, docking, that's such a weird conversation. Anyway. Wow, Monet is really offensive. Wow, Monet. Really talking about docking during a discussion about race and politics. Um, I think you I also part. feel like, I also I also feel, yeah, Monet, eating on the podcast again, <laughs> plot twist. Um, 
Yeah, I also feel like th- th- I'm glad that that Shea Coulee posted that because I was like, I felt for a while I was like, I can't. It was this big thing where like we got renewed for a new season of um, We're Here, mm-hmm. and it was like what a weird time to post. But also, black successes are a part of what we need to be sharing, and not just black tragedy. Yeah, all day, every day. Yeah. What do you think of sharing or like? I, it's such a tricky thing for me, but like when like videos of George Floyd or Philando Castile or Ahmaud Arbery, like when those videos come out, like what do you feel? How do you feel about people sharing them? Like, because on one hand, obviously, if we didn't have these videos and p- people seeing them, the uprising, the uproar, the revolution, I feel would have not have been as fast. But because we were all, we, we everyone woke up that morning and put, opened their phones. It was the first thing you saw on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever it was. Like all these things cause, cause unrest and it, it caused people to get angry and it caused the movement to get further. But, you know, a lot of people like, don't share those videos. Don't, you shouldn't watch them. But it's like, I feel it's part of what, what makes a revolution a revolution, what makes people fucking angry. The the girl who recorded that video, I'm so glad that she recorded it, and I'm and I am glad that she posted, it. and I am sad more than anything at the fact that George Floyd's family had to see that. Yeah, most people don't have to have their loved ones' last moments immortalized. His mom, imagine his mom, more, Bob. He's screaming out for his mom. Imagine her watching it. I know it must have been it must have been heartbreaking. It must have it probably broke her. Yeah, quite frankly, it probably broke her. And but I'm also glad that it that it was caught on camera so that there won't be right. so that maybe in the future we won't have so many George Floyds. Right. I was talking to my mom today about going out there and she was like, You don't need to be out there because blah blah blah. Oh my god, like, my mom is the same coronavirus. Uh-huh. And I was like, Ma, the reason I'm out there is so that maybe one day and she also like, What if you get hit by a cop or this, that, and the other? I said, Ma, I'm hoping that I'm out there so that when Nevaeh, my niece, has a child that she won't have the same concerns that you're having. Mm-hmm. So that when Nevaeh is a mother in her 50s with a child in their um, early 30s, she won't have to worry about whether or not um, they're going to get attacked by the police. Yeah. So that's why I'm out there. Yeah, my mom is the same way. She's like, she's like, hey, she's like, I know you want to talk and you want to and you want to speak out. And you want to be part of the person. She's like, I really don't like that you go out there. And I was like, yeah, but it's, I I feel that I do, and it's and I was like, I was like, it's power in numbers, and I mean, also my mom lives in St. Lucia, so I so she, I don't think she understands. I mean, obviously she she's a black person in this world, she understands, but um, she just hates the fact that I go out there, and she's like, you know, Trump is crazy. Yeah. He's gonna who knows what he's gonna do next. So I'm like, yeah, I know. But I also told my mom, I said the the fact. And I was like, y'all are young. And I said, it's not just young people doing oh, this. Yeah. There were people before I was even born. The fact that people were marching in the 60s is the only reason I could be on the streets today and not get sh- hosed down. Right. The only reason that I can do that march and not get bitten by a dog, get shot with a water hose, or shot with r- bullet bullets. Yeah. Is because someone did it before me, and then that now more people can march. And then because we march, next time this happens to us again, more people will be able to march and feel even safer than we felt. Well, you also know this whole thing with the rubber bullets. You know, you know that the that these people they're using the rubber bullets com- completely wrong. The office the rubber rubber bullets are made to be shot at the floor first to. to yeah, no. just like soften the blow, but they are literally shooting them directly at people, like like they're shooting them at folks. Which again, also, these are this, rubber be bullets legal. are. Also, I don't know if y'all know this. Rubber bullets are massive. They they're not these. They're not the bouncy balls you get out of a gumball machine. Right. Rubber bullets are the size of a palm. Are they really? They're huge. That is rubber crazy. bullets are massive. They're like this big. See, see again. This is my problem. This is and this is why I get so angry and I get. I, 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 it sounds so soft. A rubber bullet, right? No, girl. This is why I get so angry and I just it causes me to be so. I get so unirrationally upset at the fucking police because you see all of these videos of people shooting of, of them like shooting civilians with rubber bullets like directly and you like then why why aren't any mayors calling them out why aren't why aren't any governors calling them out why aren't these I don't think it's fair to say there are there are no mayors and governors calling them out or there just, are some. okay you're right there are not some not enough there are some but it's like but I don't not enough I mean I yeah and then the mayor uh, mayor Bowser in 
DC, she put, did you see that she put Black Lives Matter all um, like in huge yellow yeah, letters on, on the, the street? street. Yeah, they, they cha- and changed it to Black, Black Lives Matter Plaza. Yeah, but then, and then I posted on my story, I was like, yes, 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 yes. It's, this, it's like the small things like this and the small victories. And people were like, oh, you shouldn't praise her because she like she voted to like increase police funding more than citizen funding. And she apparently she done some other problematic things. And it's like, so then you so then you get in this conflicted thing like okay so do I not support Mayor Bowser because of these things she's doing uh, like it's just it, it's like all these politicians all these governors mayors it's they, like they're it's like it's like they're sometimes doing great stuff but then they have these other shitty things they've done before. Yes, it's like they're people. Right. It's almost like they're people, and everything they do is imperfect. She's probably learning a lot about these things as they go along. Um, and maybe, hopefully, she's on the mend. Yeah. Hopefully, she's part of the critical mass, as Dave Chappelle says. Speaking of humorists making jokes about these kind of things, the critical mass of people who are, um, you know, affecting positive change. We should probably take a break. Wait, wait, let's take a break really quick, and then we'll come back and talk about more change. Exchange, you get it? Okay. I heard there was bacon in your family. Um... And we are um, um, a key. And we, uh, it, well, do you speak? Do you speak Spanish at all? I speak some. Sp- I took four years of Spanish. I speak some Spanish. But do you do you speak it with a with a with a Spanish accent, or do you so people like El Tengo, El Gato, Le Pantalones? Well, I don't speak with a Spanish accent from Spain, no. Do you mean like a Puerto Rican accent or a Dominican accent? Those aren't Spanish accents. Oh, there's also Spain. Sp- um, Spain has, they speak Spanish in Spain as well. So to what to which I responded, no, I do not speak with a Spanish accent. Oh, uh, no. work. I mean, I, I was taught Spanish by uh, a lovely Puerto Rican woman named Senora Jimenez. And uh, I mean, I, I mean, I can read some Spanish to you and maybe the, the people who are... Uh, yes, I'd like to hear the, it. The, Maybe the, the, the fans can say who they think my Spanish sounds like. Or can the fans um, decide who has a better accent? I mean, I used to say, like, solo preguntale a mi gusta más pareja de baile todo el día está recuperando. Okay, well, um, okay, can we, okay, I think we should means, read, no, I think we should read the same thing. Estoy orgulloso de re, reunirme con, con ustedes hoy día en esta que será, en la historia. La más, la más grande demostración para la libertad en la historia de, de nuestro país. All right. Um, estoy orgulloso de um, reunirme con ustedes hoy día en esta que será en la historia la más grande demostración para la libertad en la historia de nuestro país. <laughs> Why is this so funny? Nothing. I'm just laughing. Jesus. Jesus. That was just the I have a dream speech um, translated by Jacob on the spot into Spanish. Or as they would say in Spanish, tengo un sueño. Oh, yeah. Tengo un sueño. I have a dream. Um, Oh, my God. Do you see that people have have reposted your Bob has a dream number? Oh, yeah, that girl, that's all. It's really funny because a lot of this stuff, I mean, I, this is not, I don't, don't want to be one of the folks, like, I've been about this, but um, I have been about this. So, like, for example, that outfit that I wore, that I posted today, is actually, I shot that, um, I got that for Nubia, and it, it, I didn't, I actually shot it, and I didn't know that all this was going to be happening when I shot it, and it just happened to line up perfectly because I just do a lot of black power, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. I mean, I was did this Black Lives Matter number back on my season of, drag race um so it, it was it was like watching mariah's performance i was like this aged really well which by the way it got like i could not understand what she was saying i was like i think the way she recorded her vocals was weird but i was like this sounds powerful but i just could not understand and i, I watched it the second i think time. you're confusing her i think you're confusing her with mayhem Oh, Who mayhem just, too. Both of them. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it started out so strong that I was like, oh, mayhem's about to fuck these bitches up. The drama. <laughs> uh, but how are you <laughs> feeling, <laughs> That was her trying to read Spanish. I'm, I'm checking on you. How are you doing? How are you feeling? You seem in, in, in better spirits today, even though, you, even though you tried to come for me earlier and I tried to come for you a little bit. But, you know, I feel like we're learning, we're growing, we're being sisters. You are so annoying. I feel like um, 
Um, I feel better because I was telling my mom this and I was like, the reason I'm telling a lot of people this actually, like I woke up and I felt more myself because it feels like we're being heard and affecting change. Mm -hmm. All of George Floyd's murderers have been, uh, caught and charged. Yes. Uh, they are reopening Breonna Taylor's case for investigation. Uh, Andrew Cuomo is trying to put some legislation in place in New York state. Repeal 50A. Sorry. That will make it illegal to call the cops on black people for being black. Oh, is he no really? Reason. Like I didn't hear about this. Yes, like what to make it a hate crime. Like what that woman did to that uh, gay bird watcher. I don't know if everyone knows gay. Maybe whatever. He also, what is what are the chances uh, that both their last names were Cooper? Isn't that so weird? Anyway, well, she probably her parents probably owned his fucking parents. Anyway, <laughs> so I guess it ain't that fucking weird. Um, but the to make what she did a crime. Work. Um. And people, I mean, we have seen Black Lives Matter Plaza. I mean, it. I feel it feels like this is actually affecting change. So yeah. I feel a lot less hopeless, quite frankly. Yeah, I feel better too. Um, for like, I mean, uh, even like days, uh, all for the all last week, honestly, for like four nights in a row, from the night I protested to Saturday, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, I I would just like I was I. I would try to go to bed and I and, and I was so tired, but I didn't want to go to sleep because every time we would pick up our phones and stuff, it just it was like another thing and then another thing and then another thing. And we have, obviously reports of stuff are still coming in and it's still sad and disparaging at, at times. But like Bob said, like there are like things happening and, and, and change is happening for the foreseeable future. So that is a, a nice thing to see. And um, even being part of the protests, even though they're so tiring and they're so exhausting, it just being around all of all of those people on the same wavelength as you who are there for the same purpose, for the same thing, it honestly, it just makes, it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel better. I want to say, uh, it's called the Say Their Name Reform Agenda. Work. Um... And it's, it, it allows for a transparency of prior disciplinary records of law enforcement officers by reforming uh, 50A of the civil oh. rights law. It bans chokeholds by law enforcement officers. And knees on necks will uh, be prohibiting chokeholds. Sorry. Prohibiting false race bias, 911 reports, and making them a crime. And designating the attorney general as an independent prosecutor for matters relating to the deaths of unarmed civilians caused by law enforcement. So that is the uh, say the name reform agenda that is uh, which, that, that Andrew Cuomo is trying to push to make happen in New York State. So Mary, they hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is this is all this is all all good 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 good. So good how do you stuff. feel checking in? I was just saying, I feel, I feel, I feel better. Last week was a dark week, but this week I definitely feel better, and I definitely feel um, that things are looking up, you know. And I've had some conversations this week with Clay Kane with Amanda Seals, and they also had some really interesting perspectives on everything going on, and so, so all that stuff is really good. And uh, and I, w- I went out today, and it just, it just, it feels like stuff is happening. And honestly, for the first couple of days of protesting and stuff, it felt really bleak. I was like, I feel like we're going to do this and we're going to be back here at the same place next year, same time, because 10 more black people have been killed. Um, but, you know, I think that this this time, especially, well, in my lifetime of protesting and killing black people, this feels a little different from the times before. So that <laughs> I don't know if you know what you just said. What? <clears throat> You just said in my time of protesting and killing black people. Oh, I mean in my time of protesting and the killing of black people. Um oh, I was like I was like Monet, do I need to fucking know something about you, girl? Um this time it feels different, so that gives me hope and and uh and uh, it puts me in a better space. But you know, only time will tell and Amanda says had a really good analogy. She was like, This is like a game of Jenga. She was like, for a long time we've been going at the pieces like Towards the top, that were easy. The pieces in the middle that were being easy. She's like, this time I feel like we are pulling a piece from the bottom. And when you pull a, a piece from the from the bottom of Jenga, honey, that tower is going to fall. So, I definitely feel hopeful around this time. A lot of people have been using Hasbro to make analogies for the Black Lives Matter movement. It's really raining true with white people. When <laughs> when uh, when Miss Latrice made that uh, Monopoly. Oh, thing, that was white folks were like, oh shit, Yo. Hasbro has. Hasbro, by the way, Ben and Jerry's, uh, the owner, the the the, owner, the founders of Ben and Jerry got arrested at a protest. Did he really? Ben and Jerry's is going 
off. Girl, there was a tweet online that said, Ben and Jerry's out here like, these cops can suck my Cherry Garcia dick. <laughs> like, Ben and Jerry's is not playing games during Black Lives Matter. I always like, knew Black I liked Lives, Ben that been matter. Good. They, they're making chocolate ice cream free. <laughs> Are they really? <laughs> they're not. No, no, no. That's not true. That's not true. That's oh, not my true. God, Bob. You're a monster. When they got excited. I showed up on the event. I was like, mmm. <laughs> but when they said, oh, oh bitch. I was like, like, you know what? I am really? feeling better. <laughs> you know what? I am feeling much better today. <laughs> I, just had, I just had some Ben and Jerry. I just had some Ben and Jerry. That's what I want to say. Because I want to. But girl, I, that Ben and Jerry is an ice. Well, no, I didn't have ice cream, actually. Last night I had Domino's, which fucked me up with the protest. I'm about to say, but some, Bob, what it is, Americone dream. Bob, what it is is that as you're getting older, you're getting more lactose intolerant. Before, like in my 20s, I could eat as much ice cream and cheese as I wanted. Now, bitch, I'm at a limit. If I'm having Ben and Jerry's, I can have maybe about two two spoons, and then that's it. And cheese, I can't fuck well, with cheese that much anymore. Well, I mean, we're I, I would say we're all lactose intolerant. If you don't believe me, drink a gallon of milk, and you'll find out real quick. I mean, also, if you, if, if you drink a gallon of water, you feel sick. If you drink too much water, you're like, oh, I'm going to throw up. I, and, oh, let me tell you right now. I promise you this. You and I can do this. And if, Well, I don't like this, milk. You, I don't like milk. But I'm just saying, if you drink a gallon of milk in an hour, and you drink a gallon of water in an hour, I, I <laughs> promise you. You will have vastly different results. Well, I've never. And I, I, when I say <laughs> when I say vast, that milk will fucking destroy you, and the water you'll feel a little full. Well, when you drink too much water, you you have like stomach pains. You then begin to like want to throw up. Ugh. Um, but like, I've but never saying, been. What, a, what like, are you with, like if you even if you even if you drink a gallon of Kool Aid in an hour, you'd be like, well, I'm a little full. But I'm telling you, you drink a gallon of milk in sixty minutes, you will be. Fucking wrecked. I've also never been the milk kid. Like I never, I was never the milk and cookies. The only time I drink milk was when I had cereal. And I'm a girl. I put my cereal in the microwave. Like I like, I put my, I put my cereal, put the milk, and put it in the microwave for two minutes. In the microwave. Yeah, I like it hot. For two minutes. Yeah. Two whole minutes. Two whole minutes. I don't believe you. <laughs> there is no way you put your m- m- milk. And cereal. Yes. In in two minutes, your milk will be boiling. <laughs> yeah, I like it hot. I'm my king. You, will, will you do it for the? Will you do it for for the for our patrons? I will. I mean, that's such a weird. I think what it is, Bob. But is two minutes. Two I minutes. don't mean thirty seconds. <laughs> two two minutes, bitch. I said what Wait, I said. I think that's why your milk is fucking you up because you. <laughs> Maybe the milk is fucking you up because you are boiling this shit and drinking it blistering hot. I've also been doing it since I was a kid. It's a, it's, it's a very West Indian thing to have hot, like very hot milk. Money, that sounds nasty as hell. It's not nasty. Been a thing where we'd always where uh, we'd always play in the sun and, and, and all the old girl folk like, don't be drinking no milk and playing in that sun. I've never heard. I'm, 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 I've because never you don't want the that. milk to heat up. Oh Did no, you know, girl! Well, this hot milk. Is thing. Well, what what it was was my my, my grandmother, Mammy. Shout out to Ma- Mammy, I love you. She is um she when I was a kid, she would put like she would put the milk on the stove and like put it in a put it in like a little a little pot and she would heat the milk up on the stove and then put in my cereal for me. Girl, Mary Elizabeth did not do that. <laughs> my grandma. <laughs> shout out Mary Elizabeth, R.I.P. Uh, or, or nor was Julia, Grandma Julia, nor Grandma uh, Grandma Liz. Okay, are are you? Were y'all just calling her Julia, or was it Julia? My grandmother's name was Julia, but God. we all call her Julia because we're all from the South. So everyone. By the way, I did not know my grandma's name was Julia until I went to her funeral. <laughs> what to say? I, I looked. <laughs> at the, I looked at the house, I said Julia. I thought her name was Julia. <laughs> I cannot. You know, so Bob. I, I, I called her. I called her Grandma Julie. Julie, Grandma Jubilee. Was she? Was she? A, was she a fucking X Man? Not Jubilee. Her name was Grandma Julie, and um, everyone else named her called her Julia. Hey, there go Julia. Hey, that Julia. Work. Um, on that. But when note, I went to that, when I went to that funeral and I realized her name was Julia, I was like, "Bitch, my life is upside the fuck down." Bob, can we can we go on a little vacation together next in like a couple weeks? We have been planning this vacation for twenty. Wait, what? Years, for eight years. What? You and I, you and I have been planning a vacation. I tried to get you to go with me on a cruise, and I couldn't go. Oh, Bob, wow, Bob, I was working. I know that's a shocker to you because you didn't. Okay, know I just want to point out that I, I, le- I legit do 
well before this all happened, legit th- three to four cruises a year. You were busy every single time. Yes, Bob. I'm a very hardworking queen. I work a lot. I know it's hard for you to imagine because you have time to do whatever you're doing, but I work a lot, Mom. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I have time to just do the pit stop and then do Drag My Dad and then do We're Here and then do this podcast with you and then do Talks with Pepper Minix. Pepper. I just have time. Oh, well, some of us need to do a lot to get ahead. You're looking at the size of your head, you've been doing a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I gotta go. I I, 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 I need need to go heat up my cereal. (laughs) Oh my God. Bye, bitch. Bye. A podcast network.